Good afternoon all. Today I'm playing with transistors, or at least a transistor. I've got a little transistor on this uh, prototyping board, this bit of breadboard here. Um, I've got a LED, a blue LED in the collector side with a resistor to 9 volts, 9 volt battery here. The emitter is to ground and I'm going to take this uh, resistor, it's a 10k resistor, brown, black, orange and I'm going to put a bit of current through the base emitter junction by connecting this to 9 volts that turns the transistor on and so whenever I connect this resistor uh, a small current flows through the base emitter junction and a large current flows through the collector emitter junction. So what inspired me to do this? Well I was staring at this circuit diagram which is actually of the uh, PWM5 solar charge controller and I was looking at this part here where the microcontroller's PWM output goes into this 2N3904 NPN transistor. Now it's an unusual configuration because there's a direct link from the microcontroller output to the base. Normally you'd put a base resistor in to limit the current but this actually has an emitter resistor 220k. It's a very high value resistor um, and there's another transistor here, a 2N3906, that's a PNP, and this carries on through the circuit and eventually it's used to drive the MOSFET, which is on the high side of the circuit. It's an unusual or it's an awkward thing to drive because um, the source is at 12 volts, the gate needs to be pulled up to more like 20 volts. But uh, no, I was more interested in this bit here, this simple NPN transistor circuit. So that's why I built this little breadboard transistor circuit. Now here's the circuit diagram in case uh, you find a circuit diagram easier to read than a physical layout. I've tried to make the physical layout as close to the diagram as I can. Uh, 9 volts at the top, 0 volts at the bottom. This is an NPN transistor, a 2N3904. I've got a low value resistor in the collector. Oh, I haven't marked my collector base and emitter. I'll do that now. Uh, yes, that's better. So low value resistor in the collector arm of the transistor. That's so that I can feed a reasonably strong current through the blue LED. I've gone for about 40 milliamps. Um, but I couldn't accurately calculate the value for the resistor because I don't know what the collector emitter junction voltage is. I know what the base emitter junction voltage is. It's about 0.6 volts. So I could easily calculate this 10k resistor. In fact, my calculation was that it should be a, an 8.2k, but I didn't have one, so 10k is good enough. Uh, I wanted about 1 milliamp to flow through the base emitter junction um, so that I could guarantee that I'd have the full 40 milliamps, which I chose for this LED, through the collector emitter junction. But as I say, I don't know what the collector emitter junction voltage is. Is it a standard volt drop or not? So here's a very crude uh, diagram of an NPN transistor. We've got N-typed doped silicon, uh, silicon at the top here, P-type doped in the middle and N at the bottom. Uh, these are the collector base emitter. There's this lightly doped area here. Now I got all this information from Dave Jones's video on how does a transistor work. So up here I'll link to that video now so that you can watch that. It's very good. Um, so we know that the base emitter junction is a standard PN junction. It actually behaves like a diode. So we know that the voltage across this junction is going to be about 0.6 volts. But what's the voltage between collector and emitter when the transistor is turned on? I mean, we've got N type, this low, um, what's the, the low lightly doped area, P type, N type. Is it going to be 0.6 here and another 0.6 here, 1.2 volts? I don't think so. Or does the PN junction cancel out the NP junction? I honestly don't know. I've never known this. So I thought I'd have to build this circuit to find out how this works. Now, before I start measuring voltages uh, on the breadboard on the circuit that I've uh, set up with this transistor, let's just get some basic data uh, from this transistor. I've put another uh, 2N3904 in pins 1, 2, and 3 of this component tester. Let's uh, switch that on. Transistor tester. Battery is 
Right, so this has come up with a BJT, a bipolar junction transistor. It's uh, indicating that it's an NPN, and we've got a nice little circuit diagram here of an NPN transistor. It's telling me that pins 1, 2, and 3, and these are pins 1, 2, and 3 on the socket, are emitter-based collector. So this one goes EBC. Uh, the HFE, which is the gain of the transistor, is 283. So if I'm putting 1 milliamp through the base emitter junction, um, I should be able to get a theoretical maximum of 283 milliamps through the collector emitter junction. Now, I don't know whether this transistor can actually uh, take 283 milliamps. It probably can't. It'd probably get quite hot if I did that. Um, in any case, I only want 40 milliamps. So uh, I don't need this full 283 gain. I need a gain of about 40. Well, this transistor is going to switch on and go into saturation. So that's absolutely fine. Now, the other piece of data that we've got here is that the forward voltage um, of the base emitter junction, it's treating this a bit like a diode, is 714 millivolts, so 0.7 of a volt. That's a little bit higher than the standard 0.6, um, but there it is. Forward voltage of the base emitter junction is uh, 700 and what was it? Let's wait for it. 700, I don't think it was that high last time, 780 it's saying now, 0.78. Uh, millivolts. So back to my little circuit. Now just temporarily I've put a 100k resistor um, feeding current through the base emitter junction. So this is going to be a very tiny current now, about 0.1 millivolts, 100 microvolts or thereabouts, it's only an approximation. I just wanted to see what would happen if I um, put the 10k across that to increase the base current. Would you see a change in brightness on the LED? Let's have a look. Yeah, you do just see a little bit of change in brightness. So with the 100K, we're actually getting slightly less collector emitter current because we're probably up at the uh, gain level of the transistor. It was a gain of about, uh, getting on for 200, was it? Something like that. So we really do need the 10K in order to get the full current flowing collector to emitter. Good. So let's now get some measurements. So I've got my uh, DVM here connected uh, with the uh, black connector to ground. Um, I've got my 10K resistor on the base now, so I've got current flowing continuously through the base emitter junction, only about one milliamp there. Um, we can measure the base emitter junction voltage, the voltage drop there, simply by probing the base connection here. And it's uh, higher than I was expecting, it's 0.8 volts. Um, I think the transistor tester on the second measurement said it was uh, 0.78, so I suppose that's not surprising. So 0.8 of a volt between base and emitter, but what's the voltage from collector to emitter? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to go in there. Well, it's 165, 166 millivolts. It is moving around a bit. But it's certainly not 0.6 of a volt, because that would be 600 millivolts. It's much, much lower. So maybe this NPN junction thing does sort of cancel out the uh, voltage drop. It's actually more like the voltage drop on a Schottky diode. I know that's got nothing to do with this, but there it is. It's 165 millivolts, collector to emitter, which is a good thing, of course, because uh, you want a high current to flow through that junction, so you don't really want um, well, either a high resistance or a large volt drop. No, it's quite low, 165 millivolts. So that's taught me something about transistors, which I never knew. I mean, I should have known this stuff, shouldn't I? I've been doing electronics for 40 years. But anyway, I now know that the uh, junction voltage drop between collector and emitter is much, much smaller than the uh, base emitter voltage drop. Now I did watch a couple of videos on how transistors work before uh, I made this video, in, in fact before I even uh, did these experiments. Uh, Dave Jones's video as I linked to before, but there's another good one by Veritasium. So again, I'll link to that one up here. It's all about electrons and holes and uh, P-type doped areas and N-type doped. Well worth a watch if you are a little bit uh, vague on how transistors actually work. I certainly was, but I'm a lot more clued up now. Cheerio.